All right. So your friend bought a mobile home park. You're looking at him going, well, shoot, like I should, I, I, I should do that. Is that. Did you jump in and buy one then? So, you know, it was interesting because I started going through this activity of, well, do I have the time to do it? Should I lend him money? Because at that time I was kind of um, a hard money lender for him because mm. I had cash, but I didn't really have any skills in real you were, estate. You were still getting that from Cutco at the time? Correct. Point? Okay. Correct. And so what I ended up doing is I uh, said to my friend, I'm like, okay, you're paying me 10%. So you've got to at least be making 10%, right? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so that's 20%. That's incredible. And I said, well, why don't I just do what you're doing? And my friend Tim said, you should, mm -hmm. which is so great because he could have been like, oh yeah, no, you should just keep lending me money or no, yeah. I'll, I'll pay you 12%. No, he yeah. said, you should get into it. And then he was willing to take me under his wing. Um, and then I went to my, a boot camp, right? So I, I laughed at my friend for going yeah. to this boot camp. And then all my friends laughed at me because they said, what are you getting into? And I said, oh, I'm going to start investing in mobile home parks. Uh, so I went to this boot camp, befriended the guy who ran the boot camp, who Ooh. happened to be Frank Rolf. I was going to say, was it a Frank yeah. Rolf fund? Yeah, we so did a Frank Rolf fund too. It was great because Frank and I lived in the same area at the time. Mm -hmm. So back then I was living in, in St. Louis. And so we are actually on the same flight. And so we bonded. I took him out to dinner. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we just, we got to know each other and he took me under his wing and just was such a great mentor to me uh, over the last 15 years and has become just a really close friend. I mean, I just love talking to him and hanging out with him, but he was very uh, instrumental in, you know, kind of helping me on this next phase of my journey. And it, it was crazy because my friend was telling me, you know, who was getting into single family homes, like how many homes he had to buy to make the income that he wanted to make and how much work it was. And I saw in one fail swoop him buy one property and it kind of solved for all of his expenses. Mm. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. Well, I don't have that much. He raised most of that money. And I was like, well, I, I don't know if I know or who I know, or maybe I'm uncomfortable. I've never done it. So I'm afraid to like raise money. I'm going to just use my own money mm. until I figured it out. And maybe I never need to raise money. Um, and, and by the way, I've never raised money to this day. I've always just used my own money. Really? Um, which is interesting. Like everyone thinks I should start a fund and <laughs> you know, I just, I didn't have the, the desire for that. So I kept it pretty simple, but I bought the first mobile home park that, uh, we have still to this day in our portfolio and that one purchase replaced my wife's income. So she was a teacher at the time and that one purchase bought her time back in one fail swoop. She could stay home. We shortly had her daughter after that. Um, she could, you know, be the mom that she wanted to be without feeling like she had to work, which was pretty incredible. That's powerful. Why, why mobile home parks and not like multifamily or, you know, office self storage? Did you look in the other ones? Or I looked there... into a lot. Yeah. Okay. I think part of the allure on mobile home parks is that I had mentors that were doing it mm. that I could copy. Like I was smart enough to realize I don't know anything, but with the right playbook, I can be, I don't know, 70% is good. Like if I did everything I could to follow the program, maybe I'm 60, 70% is good. And maybe I can work up to 80% or 90%. And maybe in time I can get good enough to evolve and, and innovate the processes, right? But uh, early on, I gained confidence in that if my friend can do it, I can do it. If my mentor can do it, I can do it because I got their playbook. Yeah. And so that was part of it. The other part of it is I like the scarcity. Mm. So there's a, a finite number of mobile home parks. There's 44,000 in the US, about 100 get redeveloped a year. So that number decreases, right? Uh, it's hard to build new ones. It's hard to get the zoning. Cities don't like them because, you know, it's the taxes that they can charge are so small on these, you know, homes. So it doesn't cover school or hospital or, you know, any of the stuff. So they lose money having mobile home parks, right? So cities don't like them. Um, they're also often not aesthetically pleasing. And, and, you know, I think that we've had this negative stigma of what they are because of many of the different shows that are out there uh, that portray them in a bad way. But a lot of people don't know that the greatest real estate investor of our time and, and maybe ever, uh, 
his number one holdings is mobile home parks. And that's Sam Zell, Sam Zell yeah. right? I had a chance to hang out with Sam and, and pick his brain. And, you know, he's from Chicago like I am. And he got into mobile home parks early. And he said to this day, the greatest investment he ever made uh, was in 1982 when he bought his very first mobile home park. That single investment was his best investment he ever made. For the next 10 years, he realized that this is an asset class that was untouched. So he just kept buying them up. And then at that 10 year point, he went public and uh, the company ELS uh, is uh, his company, number one largest uh, um, you know, real estate owner. And, and that is the uh, largest real estate REIT. Well, I love when I asked you the question about why mobile home parks? You didn't start. I mean, you didn't start with the tactical reasons or the or the technical ones, right? Like the the you know the fact that they're the, the whatever limiting the number of them. Like that's a real thing, right? The yeah. the fact that you can you know your rent raises usually make a bigger impact. The fact that tenants take care of their own you know. Uh, problems, toilets breaking. Like there's all these technical reasons that we like mobile home parks. I do them, you do them, right? I love that you started with because I had mentors in the space because oftentimes I think people are always asking the question like, what is the best investment strategy to follow? And I think it's all, oftentimes people are looking for a technical reason, like a technical answer. But in reality, it's usually like they all work, right? Like you could have chosen self-storage. You could have chosen multifamily. You could have chosen dog grooming businesses. <laughs> like they all work. And if people just understood that just business works, generally works if you work it right. So what's actually more important than the technical stuff is the who part. Like who can you follow? Who can you learn from? What fires you up a little bit? Something in your soul was like, oh, mobile home parks. At that point, you're like, that sounds cool. And like, I, like it's almost like the most important asset is the one you pick versus the most, like that there is some objective, like, data that says, no, this is the best thing. It's whatever one you can pick, learn the most, grow the most and stick with the longest is the best asset. Yeah. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I feel like if you're intentional, you're going to find mentor. There are plenty of people that have succeeded at a high level that would love to give back and would yeah. love to teach and th they're going to get great value out of it. For me, it was like, this is right in front of me. I'd be crazy not to take it. Like, yeah. I don't know what the best thing to start in is, but I do know if I've got a mentor, I'm going to be probably pretty decent at yeah. that thing in time in short order. It's actually you know? one of the things I love about real estate in general is real estate is such a well-worn path. You know, like we're not reinventing anything. Like we're just like literally doing exactly what a million other people have done. Uh, and so like when I, yeah, when I'm trying to do a mobile home park, I don't have to be like, oh, I wonder how would this happen? Like, no, it's been done. Just go ask Frank what he did and then go ask Justin what he did. And they're probably the same thing because it's, it's such well-worn paths over and over and over. So yeah, it's really hard as long as you can keep your ego out of out of it and you know I can figure it out by myself as long as you're willing to ask for help or read the books or whatever you're going to figure it out and I love the about real estate unlike the dog grooming business I mean maybe there's a lot of them but you're kind of making things up at that point if you're the only dog groomer in your market you don't know if it's going to be successful but I guarantee you real estate in your market's going to be successful because it already is for lots of people